Good Wednesday afternoon and or evening, everybody. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct on various social media networks, which you can see in the blue bar down at the lower section of your screen. Email address right here underneath me and just underneath my email address in that scrolling line that you see is livemeteors.com, a live view from what I'm seeing right now of meteors smacking into the atmosphere. They leave behind a trail of ionized gas. Radar echoes bounce off those areas of gas and reflect back to radar dishes that can hear when a meteor strikes the Earth's atmosphere. So what you see when you see the lines dropping on screen, not that great big one right there that's continuous, but every once in a while you'll see just a bright flare of a line for just a little bit, and that will be the echo of a meteor shooting across the atmosphere. Probably going to be seeing a lot more of those in the near future as we have, again, the possibility of seeing a lot more with the Lyrid meteor shower in progress right now. So something to take a look at. There's a small one that just happened uh, right there. Another one right there. So it could be a trail of meteor debris going into the atmosphere. Uh, moon's rise, moon set, sunrise, sunset data in the red line at the bottom of your screen. And, of course, more information available at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to know more about what's going on. We've included information about what's happening, uh, timeanddate.com. A great place to get information about all this detailed numbers about how long the day is, how much daylight we have, when moonrise, moonset data is. That's at timeanddate.com if you'd like to know more about that. So tons of information available there if you'd like to get more details. Into the rest of the day today and the night tonight. Should be again getting some clearer skies out there. We've had some clouds and even some showers and a few thunderstorms popping up from time to time. But as we go into later on tonight, toward about midnight, we should see some relatively good viewing conditions. We'll take a look at how good coming up here in just a little bit. Over the next couple of days, we do stand the possibility, especially on Thursday through about Friday, of getting in some showers and thunderstorms here, and that means more clouds, and that means less chance of getting anything good in the way of visibility. So hopefully going to be getting some clearer skies out there for tonight. Next couple of days doesn't really look all that good, so if you're going to be doing any stargazing, tonight will be your night to get that done, and hopefully going to remain very much on the quiet side into the evening hours. Sky conditions out there into this evening through about News Channel 3 at 6 and just afterwards toward about sunset, the blue on the forecast page that you see from the National Weather Service in Memphis. What you're looking at is an indication of how much cloud cover the National Weather Service expects there to be in the area. 34% coverage, about one-third covered. 21% coverage, that's up around Union City. 21% coverage around the Jonesboro area, so about one-fifth of the sky covered over by possible clouds. 28%, about a quarter covered, partly cloudy to mostly clear skies. Teens percentage around and south of I-40, so that's something to take a look at. So hopefully some clearer skies out there right after sunset. Getting into around News Channel 3 at 10, even better conditions out there. Notice that what we see in the way of visibility, whoops, sorry about that. There we go for 10 o'clock tonight and 1 o'clock in the morning, we should be again seeing uh, the possibility of some less amounts of coverage out there, and that's definitely good news, but it looks like we'll be getting more chances of more clouds into the Mid-South as we get into very early uh, tomorrow morning with about 44% coverage chance around the Jonesboro area, and that's just clouds. That's not even rainfall out there, but there will be chances of rain. Looks like fog into tomorrow morning as well, so that can be a bit of a problem as you get out the door into tomorrow, and tomorrow Tomorrow night, Thursday night, looking ahead, uh, sky cover, the gray colors indicates again where we see uh, the possibility of some amounts of coverage around 80 even close to 90%, and that means about nine-tenths of the sky is going to be covered over by clouds. So little, if any, possibility of seeing anything on Thursday night. Uh, let's take a look at Friday night and see if there's any hope there. It looks like it's even more covered over through Friday night. Next best chance of any viewing will not be Saturday night, and doesn't look like Sunday night. Well, Sunday night it clears out a little bit, so that's some good news. At least we'll get rid of most of the cloud cover out there. So we could see some good viewing conditions late Sunday evening. I'll keep you updated throughout the rest of the weekend as to what we may be seeing. Visibility into tonight, the blue line indicates again the cloud cover uh, area that we're looking at just right here. 
and that again dropping its way down by just a little bit heads on down to about a 10% coverage chance into and around uh, late tonight early tomorrow morning so skies should be a little clearer than what they are right now uh, to get some in there and we'll also see a break in the rainfall noticing again that the green colors and the red colors on the left hand side of your screen just uh, right down that direction showing again the rainfall chances while we have them dwindling, leaving the area not that much left of them, but unfortunately as we look into tomorrow, they start to pick back up again and they stick around all the way through late night Thursday into Friday, so chances of good visibility and again that blue line that you see starting right about there making its way upwards over the next several hours into around the rest of Friday. Looks like again the visibility out there not looking too good. All this information available from the National Weather Service on their day planner forecast information uh, forecast page if you want to take a look at this great opportunity to use for a planner and get more information there. Moon has reached last quarter just uh, about maybe 4.57 this morning according to the United States uh, Navy information that they have from the observatory back east and showing again uh, moonrise was early this morning at 2.01 a.m. and set early this afternoon at about 12.39. Possibility getting in some clear skies again looks pretty good. The Memphis Clear Skies chart, cleardarksky.com or go to the Memphis Astronomical Society at memphisastro.org for more information there. Quiet with the sun. We're not seeing any major amounts of problems out there. Uh, we've got a solar wind area pointed our direction and that that could be something that may spark a little bit more interference in the next couple of days, but doesn't really look like anything uh, major taking place, so good news on that. This information, courtesy of the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. If you've never seen this before, it's a great place to go to to get information about what's going on with the sun and any type of interference from our local star. Let's take a look and see what's going on tonight when it comes to brighter satellites out there. Again, remember, the lower the number here until you get to zero, yeah, that's as bright as it can get. So about a 2.8, that's very dim. 1.7, that's not quite as dim. The very brightest object tonight is going to be a Chinese rocket booster. It's a piece of debris which is going to be rising in the northwest at approximately 921. Again, hopefully clouds won't interfere with it too much. And this should be decently visible, but you're going to have to take a very close look to this. It's going to go upwards from the northwest horizon, rising, and then right about at 925, it's going to disappear. It's going to move into Earth's shadow between 925 and 926. So you might be able to see this. Again, this is CZ-3B. It's an old debris tank, an old uh, space junk piece up there. Uh, that's what we're going to be seeing again, the possibility of some more uh, visibility up there. There's tons of space junk up there to take a look at. And as for tonight, that'll be the brightest thing that we can see out there. The OTV space plane, that will also be visible just barely. Uh, again, that'll be rising in the northwest and that'll be happening at almost about the same time at right about, coming up right about the area of Taurus. It'll be going right past Aldebaran, very bright star there. And that'll be rising at about 925, fading right about 9 26. But once again, this is not going to be entirely bright, so you're going to have to look for this. This is that uh, so-called top-secret space plane that's been up there for quite some time. So if you want to try to see that, that's available out there, so a good opportunity to see that out across the area. Let's go into tomorrow morning. Again, more clouds expected, but we could see the possibility of some more uh, activity out there into the next uh, 24 hours, and it looks like hardly anything's going to be visible. Again, brightness at this time, the magnitude, nothing less than a 1.7 and we really need it to be a lot brighter than that to really see too much of anything. Add to that, more clouds are going to be coming back into the picture by tomorrow morning, early before sunrise, so doubtful we may be able to see too much of anything. How about iridium flares? Not that much to be seen at this time. Again, the Iridium Communications Network, the company went bankrupt, but the satellites are still floating around out there with solar panels on them. They can be very bright. They'll fade into view. They'll become very bright for a second, and then they'll fade back out again as they head one direction or the other. And this is a good place to go to at Heavens Above to get more details about where, when, and how you can see these things. Ooh, a good meteor just went through uh, right there. Just see that bright line dropping on down the waterfall display. 
Again, this is a good opportunity to listen to the meteors if you have not done so so far. Mars, as of about uh, four days ago, latest report, 25 degrees for a maximum temperature at the Curiosity rover site, 45 the maximum temperature on the ground, and 106 degrees below zero, the air temperature, the coldest air temperature uh, reporting in from Mars. We'd like to see more about the remote environmental monitoring station and more from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the Mars Science Laboratory on board the Curiosity rover. All you have to do is go to Mars mars.nasa.gov and the web page right there. Great opportunity to learn more about weather in other planets. Here's some cool stuff to take a look at too. Scientist has created a sundial tattoo that you can wear along with a movable uh, what gnomon, if I uh, believe that's called, pronounced, basically the shadow caster right there that you see that can tell you what the time is just based on this tattoo that you have on part of your uh, arm that you can see. Uh, good opportunity to see more about that. Uh, we've also got more information about the uh, entire article about more from the retired uh, University of Washington astrobiology professor Woody Sullivan. That's also available. I just tweeted about that a little while ago. More astronomy information including uh, Cassini on its final voyage making its way through the solar system around Saturn. It'll be passing through Titan uh, pretty soon within about the next few days. And then after that, the finale in September as uh, Cassini plunges into Saturn, and that'll be happening in about September. That's available on my Twitter page, twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. And you can also find out a lot more about what's going on on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash austinonic WREG3. And tons of information available there, including uh, information about the STEM knots uh, from NASA. NASA would like to know more about uh, your kids, if they have the, what talent of what it takes to become an engineer or mathematician, and all kinds of great opportunities uh, to learn more about things like that. And also my forecasts and all kinds of other great information. That's all available at facebook.com slash WREG. Also kind of cool, uh, a meteor made its way past the Earth, an asteroid today, uh, made it through, well, pardon me, this was on... Uh, Yes, was today by about 4.6 lunar distances. One lunar distance is from the Earth to the Moon. This was a little bit beyond that, but as of right now, that is a basic cosmic cat's whisker. So something to think about on that, that we have millions of things floating around up there that we don't even know about. So if you'd like to know more about these and other things out there and how we can stay safe and all kinds of other great stuff, all you have to do is drop by facebook.com slash austinonicwreg3, and I'll be glad to tell you more about that. Questions, concerns, ideas, comments, something we can include on here, please let me know, austin.onic at wreg.com, and I'll be glad to talk with you more about what's going on when it comes to anything involving astronomy, especially stuff that we can see here in the Mid-South. There are a lot of events coming up as we go toward the solar eclipse in August. That's about uh, two to three months away, so looking forward to that, and also, let's see, four months away, if I'm not mistaken, so that's coming up pretty soon. If you'd like to know more about that, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on there, and also keep it tuned to me. I'll be on for Todd Demers is coming up bright and early tomorrow morning if you'd like to know more about what's going on with the weather forecast in the Mid-South. Live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for more coming up with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the evening for your forecast with Jim and Tim, and I'll be in for Todd early tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us for our complete updated on astronomy on Skyblog 3. And whatever you do, whenever it comes to astronomy and science, remember to keep looking up.